Hi everyone, I'm Jane at Rock and Worms. Welcome. On this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how I store my castings. There's a lot of information out there on the, you know, traditional ways to store your castings, and I do use those methods. But I've also started using a couple new methods that you may not have heard of yet, so I'm gonna share that as we go along. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the traditional methods, which is using you know, your standard five or six gallon bucket with a lid and having the castings in here. Now these happen to be one 12th inch sifted castings from my Red Wigglers. Look how beautiful this is. It's a little dry, which is something we're gonna talk about, how the different methods help your castings retain moisture. But if I clump it and drop it, you can see that there's still, you know, enough moisture in here to keep the biota and any little hatching cocoons, little red wigglers in there, you know, safe and happy and, and being able to breathe. So this is a standard method. Five gallon bucket works great. The next method is very similar. This is using the old kitty litter box and it functions the same way as far as, you know, the plastic retaining moisture. You need to open or aerate it occasionally so it does get the air exchange. What I tend to do with my plastic lids, I don't put holes in them. Um, some of them have holes anyways, but um, I just don't seal the lid. So enough air gets in there that the biota and any little worms in there are just fine. One of the benefits of the kitty litter buckets are you can usually get them free. Either you have cats and you get, you know, the buckets yourself, or you know somebody who has cats. Sometimes you can even pick them up, uh, uh, you know, off the side of the road. But this, this is, again, a very standard method, very effective. The next method, now we're moving into things you may not have heard about so much, is to use a sandbag as your casting storage. Now, this is what you know, your standard sandbag looks like. I use my sandbags for lots of different functions around here, but casting storage, especially if I'm selling the castings, is one of them because the bag is water and air permeable. So again, oxygen can get into the castings, keep that biota alive. And also there can be some, you know, moisture exchange as well which can actually turn into a con because one of the downsides or something you need to keep your eye on with sandbags is your castings can dry out much quicker than they do in an enclosed plastic, you know, bucket. The, bu the bucket retains the moisture much better, okay? But, you know, the bags are easy to you know, grab and go. You can fill them much more easily to different uh, volumes or weights depending on how you're dealing with your castings. There's seven pounds of castings in this bag. Uh, one of my local customers prefers a seven pound amount because it fits what he's doing with the castings, you know, his pots or whatever. Um, so it's just easy for me to do it, put it in, you know, the bag and out the door it goes. I don't have to hound him to get my buckets back. You know, he can just, you know, keep the bags or, or return them to me for a refill and they don't take up very much space when you're not using them as well, as opposed to the buckets. So sandbags plus is it's easy to use and it keeps the air going at all levels. You can stack them in different ways and, um, you know, the air can get to the biota even if you, you know, lay and stack, where with, again, the buckets, you can only go so high before you have to worry about, you know, the bottom buckets having too much weight on them and collapsing, because that would be bad, okay? So that's for the sandbags. Now a related, oh, you know what? I want to show you this first with the, the, with the sandbags, okay? One of the other cons with the sandbags is they, they aren't as easy to fill as a bucket, 
okay? You know, the bucket is rigid. You, you know, you put the castings in, you put the top on, very easy. The sandbag being more flexible, you know, it's kind of wonky willy and you gotta, you know, make sure you don't spill your stuff all over the place. So here's one of the tips is you can take your sandbag and put in a bucket. Um, this happens to be a frosting bucket that I got free from a local bakery and it just fits, okay? So it keeps it open. Now I'll show you, I have not yet cut off the bottom of this yet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the bottom out and this just acts as a big old funnel for filling the bag and that does make it a lot easier, okay? And then what I also do is I just kind of put it in this other bigger bucket to again, hold everything so I can dump the castings in pick this up, shake the castings down, put it back to whatever level is that, fill it again, okay? So this does make it a lot easier. Also, if you listen to some of my tips on other videos about picking up um, cheap little sand buckets at uh, Target, Walmart, your dollar store after the holidays, this is an Easter bucket, but Halloween was just there, um, you know, you can pick them up at 50, 75% off. And it, you know, again, depending on your sandbag, you know, this one doesn't fit quite as nice. You know, the tighter is nicer, but you know what? Cutting the hole in the bottom and having it as a funnel still is a much better way to go, even if you have to fuss with a slightly smaller bucket. And these might be more readily available to you than say a frosting bucket. All right, so you can play with the sizes of that. The last uh, storage method I am now using because I've got a ton of castings right now is related to the sandbag. And this is using a bag made of a similar kind of material that your pet food comes in. Now this is obviously chicken feed bag because I have chickens but your dog food kibble, your cat food kibble, if you buy bird seed, um, you know, a big you know, bag of bird seed, that they will also come in this kind of bag. And this is also water and air permeable. And, it, and if you're not sure if the bag you have is air or water permeable, just take it to your hose or your sink, your shower, put some water in the bottom, and just see if the water runs out. If it does, you're good to go. If it doesn't, look for a different bag, all right? Now, the benefit of this bag is it holds a lot, right? When you have a lot of castings, especially if you're making castings over the winter because you're in a cold area and you want to store a lot of castings until the spring or summer planting season comes along, you know, getting a lot of buckets gets expensive. They can be, you know, three, four, five dollars a bucket. You may not be able to pick up free ones somewhere, um, but you know, you have those dog or cat food bags lying around, or you can get them from friends or family. And you can store a lot of castings for, you know, months and months in these bags until you're waiting for your planting season. Now, these bags have some of the same drawbacks as the uh, sandbags because even though the water and air permeable is a positive thing, you do have to keep an eye on whether your castings are getting too dry. And if they do, you just, you know, spritz in, you know, some water into the bag, into the bag, into the bucket, and that will, you know, re-moisten your castings and keep that biota going. And if you have any baby worms in there, it will, you know, help them survive until you're either ready to put them into your garden or your lawn or pull them out and reintroduce them into your worm bins, okay? So the other, you know, drawback is, you know, this bag can, again, get heavy, but, you know, you don't have to fill it up all the way, okay? So you can, you know, adjust it as you need it. And then what I do is I just, you know, full of castings, I crinkle it up, and I do use a zip tie because it's easier and more secure than using, um, you know, the, the sandbag ties. Um, they, it, you know, the zip tie stays closer, uh, closer, tighter, 
more securely because I can either, you know, stand these up in a, in a corner or I can lay them down and stack them this, you know, horizontally as well. And if I do that, I really want the, you know, the neck of the bag to stay closed. Now, where do I store my castings? Right now, I'm storing them primarily either in my house on the bottom of my racks or I'm storing them in an outdoor shed or uh, storage, you know, one of those little storage houses, you know, pool houses, resin things. I, I don't want, know what they're called, but I store them there. I live in a warm climate that's warm all year round. So that's the coolest place I can store my castings. But if you're lucky enough to have a basement or, uh, you know, a cool garage or something that you can store your castings in, that would even be better. Keeping them a little bit on the cooler side will keep the biota active, but also slow down the drying out of your castings so you don't have to, you know, check on them as often and moisten them if, as needed as often, all right? So that's how I store my castings. I'm honestly using all these methods right now, and it just depends where I am in my castings journey do I have a lot of castings that I need to get out of my house and, you know, out of my way? Or am I taking castings out of my working bins and I need someplace temporary to temporary, yeah, temporary to store them until I can offload them into a bigger bag? Or if I'm, you know, selling my castings, then I can put them into the sandbag. All right. So, you need to figure out what works best for you, but it's always good to have multiple options so you can fit what you're doing with what your current need is. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. If you're storing your castings in even a different method than I talked about here, let me know in the comments. If you have you know questions, concerns, whatever, let me know in the comments and let's have that conversation. All right. So otherwise, I will see you next time. I am yours in the dirt, Jane.